Isn't this a trivial question? If you don't give a job to the fresher, how the fresher will gain experience and become experienced? And you are seeking an experienced candidate. Well, I have answered this question multiple times in my past videos. But today I'm going to give you honest, crude, raw industry insights. Okay. And it can be a little blunt and brutal to accept it, but it's the truth. The first thing which you all should know is industry is really not bothered to hire you. Yes, you, you heard me right. Why they're not bothered to hire you is because they get plenty of applications, right? But especially the big ones, the big companies, they get a lot of applications. Well, the smaller ones really suffer. They don't get the right applications. So this is a big gap, which nobody tells you. The bigger companies like Biocons and Gene will get 5,000 applications for one post. And a smaller company, which is like, a five-membered or 10-membered company, they don't get even a single application, right? So it's not that these guys are not going to pay you salary. They're going to pay you salary, but the bigger ones are more reputed ones. Everybody knows them. So everybody's applying there. Nobody's applying here. So that's one problem. That's one thing wherein you should know that these guys will actually hire freshers also, right? Smaller companies. Now, just coming to the next industry insight, which I wanted to give you is industry does not want a degree holder. Now, does it mean that you should not do a degree? No, no, you should do it. But the point I want to make is they want someone who can connect two dots which don't connect logically, right? For example, uh, you should be someone who asks questions which nobody is asking, like why can't we grow a tree in 24 hours? Or why can't we treat um, leukemia by just injecting a you know, uh, solution. So basically, all of this, so you have to be able to connect data which are unseemingly unrelated, but still overlap and come out with conclusions. Now, that's something which a fresher cannot do, right? But if you have experience of doing these, you can, right? So basically, that's why industry is not bothered to hire you. Instead, industry is bothered to hire those who can do this cross match. Now, having said that, that means you need to have a lot of experience of analyzing crunching data of whatever size and scale. You should have experience of reading a lot of research papers. You should have experience of uh, hands-on and practical skills. You should have references, right? So yeah, they say you should have references. So how would a fresher get references? You're just getting started in the industry. Well, that's where the catch is. The bigger companies are too much crowded with applicants, so they will never ever listen to you. So they just want to filter out people by saying this. Well, the smaller ones may not ask for a reference. That's a point number one. Point number two is your references can be someone in the industry, right? And how can you get into the industry? you can reach out to people on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is the biggest resume database which is available publicly. So you can just go and find out who is working in this company and who can be of my help. Reach out to them and say that, can you please refer me? Uh, I'm applying for this job, but nobody is. But of course, you can't do that straight away. You can't, you can't demand that on the first day. You have to do networking. And how to do networking? I have already made a separate video of that. You can check in the description. Now, Insufficient networking leads to rejections because you won't have references. Now, in the meanwhile, uh, also one more thing which uh, freshers lack is lack of specialization. And how can you overcome that? You can do hands-on training. You can do some uh, projects in government as well as private labs. You can publish some papers to build your credibility, right? I read a beautiful line that uh, you can, uh, you know, rebuild a company but you cannot rebuild your reputation, right? Building reputation takes time. So what you have to do is you have to build your reputation. That's the only thing which you have got, right? It's like your own self branding. So you have to build your reputation, right? And the more specialization you do, the more hands-on you do, the more papers you publish, the more projects you do, you build your reputation, right? So that's very, very important. Another point is lack of awareness of the trends of the industry. So uh, if I say that, okay, uh, the newest trend is XYZ, you'll be like, how can you say that? So, you know, you need to have data to back that up. So you can go through Biotechnica or various job, other uh, news and job portals. Look at what kind of jobs are being posted. Look at what kind of news is coming, latest news from the industry. And then reverse engineer it that, okay, if they're going to have this, how would we uh, 
uh, get into this job in the future. So you can, the more awareness you have about the industry, the more industrial trends you will be able to, you will be future ready. So that's the point we have to know. And uh, majority of the, you know, smaller companies won't have a recruitment team. Right? So they will either outsource it to Biotechnica or they will do it themselves. So whichever way it is happening, you can always reach out to us and we can help you. Right. One important thing which I forgot to mention here is majority of the students have a weak CV or a cover letter. They don't work on it. They don't. Uh, they just copy from the classmate. Like Tumhara achha lag raha hai. I'll just copy from you. But that is not going to work because all your CVs look the same way. They are not going to. Your CV has to be attractive. It should be magnetic. It should have the right skill set on the top. As soon as your name and phone number ends and email ID below that, just ent enter your skill set and then the objective. And the objective should not be very subjective. The objective should be objective, right? So it should be very particular. It should be very specific to that particular company where you are applying. Same comes to cover letter. You have to tailor make it. You have to make sure that it is only for that particular company. It's not that you just copy paste a general cover letter and you know um, send it. You have to show your excitement in the cover letter. Exactly that's how the cover letter, that's why the cover letter exists, right? So that's something which you should know. Now coming to uh, the last part which I also said in the beginning is biotech companies really don't want to train you. They have better work to do and they will never train you. So Enroll yourself into college, I mean, uh, courses and um, diplomas and stuff where somebody will train you for this, right? So that you can fill this skill gap because colleges won't do it. They're not bothered. They got the money. They forgot you. But once you have the degree, once you're out, now you need to do this. Now, I'm not saying most of the colleges are doing this. Many of the great colleges, which I know, like IBAB, Yenapoya, Amrita, you have uh, Nirma University, SRM. So these companies, this, uh, these universities are not doing it. But many other universities are just, you know, abandoning their graduates and postgraduates in the market. So they, that is where you will see all the negativity being spilled out on YouTube saying that there is no job. But the truth is, jobs are there. The only problem is you are gravitating too much on the bigger companies. You are not looking at the smaller companies. There are five or seven big companies, but there are... 300, 500, 350 plus smaller companies, right? Problem solved. You have to just look at smaller companies. Now, coming to the debate which we can have for a stipend or the salary, that initially they give you less salary or higher salary. Salary should come as a byproduct of your work. Once you have done the work, they will automatically absorb you as a full time employee or a regular employee. That is where it will grow. But initially, your learning is the investment they're already making. So, you know, enjoy that investment and uh, grow professionally. So that's my uh, advice to you. Now, I know you will have a lot of questions related, related to this. So all you can do is you can email me at shekhar at biotechnica.org or you can comment below. And if I find time, I'll definitely reply down or to the email which you sent me. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.